Hey guys, welcome back to the 1394 project. I feel like it's been forever since I did a video on this thing, but I guess it hasn't been that long. Uh, I was waiting on a few parts to come in, and uh, finally they've actually come in, so we can get started on doing a little bit more work to this thing. So I'll just uh, flip the camera around here and show you guys kind of what we got going on. All right, so in the interest of not dragging this out too, too long, we got uh, brake slave cylinders, which I was gonna put on, I actually started on this side, I got the bracket off and everything, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the brackets off like that one is right there. I'll do the same thing on this side and we'll just paint it with them off and I'll paint that separately. So that's my kind of new plan on that, but we do have uh, uh, two brand new brake slave cylinders and they came with bleeders too, which is pretty good. I didn't realize that uh, when I ordered them. So. Uh, what else do we got here? We got um, uh, track rod ends. Hopefully they're the right ones. I think they are just for the ends on the track rod, oddly enough. And we got two of these special, come on now, focus in frame, spherical bearings uh, for the steering cylinder. So we're going to replace those as well. And uh, once the front end components are done we'll be pretty much ready to uh, shoot this thing with paint you guys can see that I've taped off a bunch of stuff we're gonna just shoot the whole thing again uh, is the new plan so I did put a little bit of uh, primer on here uh, these surfaces were done with uh, POR 15 uh, rust uh, rust paint so I put the uh, special primer over the top of it just as a like an intermediate coat so that's the idea there so that's kind of where we're at i'm doing a little bit of zinc plating um, as well i got this whole uh, zinc plating setup kind of going on here not really doing much with it right now i got some water heating up there and we're gonna do a little bit more here i got the uh, these pins if it'll focus these pins for the brake slave cylinders, so I'm going to clean those up and plate them again. But it turns out pretty good. I didn't do any video on it really, but this is uh, a piece that I did for the uh, 380. I've been working on that a bit too, the 380CK. A lot of you guys probably forgot about that one, but that's okay. Um, I built new uh, hydraulic control levers, levers because these ones were... Um, more so bad so i've been kind of working on that a little bit too and uh yeah so there'll be an upcoming video on that i guess when we get it going but we're working on this for right now so we'll uh we'll get into it because i think i promised in the last video we'll go to a video actually working on stuff instead of just talking about it so uh let's get busy doing something here i guess the logical place to start would be here i got a nut here one of the ones that holds the hitch on, I believe. Oh, is that tight or loose? This tight, I guess that's why, that's why I didn't move. Right, there we go. So one of the bolts that holds the hitch uh, plate on also holds the, uh, oh yeah, that tab, I should bend that tab, that's a good idea. So it's got a fold over lock on it. And I kind of just have to deal with, with the uh, braille mostly. <sighs> feel it, but it's hard to see. <clears throat> All right, let me switch to a ratchet. There's 
There's the big one. Now there is, there's two smaller three quarter inch bolts. I guess that's tightened again. Yeah, I'm a mess. There's two smaller uh, three quarter inch bolts that hold the bracket on the rest of the way. So the brakes on this tractor didn't actually work uh, when we got it. This was all seized up and I was able to free it and uh, I just didn't find the slave cylinders were all that expensive anyway. So I said, you know, what the heck, we'll, we'll just replace them with two new ones now. Um, you know, while it's easy, I'm probably gonna do uh, new master cylinders as well. Um, I got the clutch slave cylinder out being rebuilt. That's actually on the way back now because uh, those are seem to be quite expensive to buy uh, aftermarket. Or uh, you can't get them aftermarket, and they're expensive to buy new. But anyway, um, so that's on the way back to me now. And I think, yeah, up in the cab, we're just going to do a uh, new master cylinders. Uh, we got a few new lines to put on the back. So, everything should be new and good to go. Um, there we go. Everything should be new and good to go. And, uh, yeah, the... Uh, Brake system should be good on it. So, the other side, the cotter pin was missing. So, I, we have to actually do something here uh, and then drive it out. But it just slipped off there anyway. So, we can drop that right there. So, I'm going to paint this assembly separate. And uh, it's just garbage anyway. So, we'll drive this pin out of there. And then uh, maybe I'll show you guys a little clip of the zinc plating process um i could do a whole video on it uh down the road if that's of interest to you guys but anyway i'll get this pin out right now let's see I figure out my hand moves here That's our pin out. I was focusing on it, but anyway, this here we can uh, clean up that bolt and stuff. I'll we'll do the same thing on the other side, and uh, I'll probably do that off camera. But anyway, let's go show you this uh, zinc plating process now. All right, so <clears throat> this here one, I think we're going to end up making a new one. Um, yeah, I tried drilling out the pin and the end of it there, and I ended up breaking the drill bit off inside of it. But anyway, it shouldn't be a huge deal to just turn another one real quick. Um, so, this is the CAD plating setup, or the nickel plating, or the zinc plating, whatever you want to call it. Um, I actually just got this set up the other day, so I got a few things I got to change on it yet. I got to get some more uh, degreaser and this and that and other thing. But anyway, so basically, we got your degreasing bucket, your acid etch, which isn't, it's not really an acid, but it's an etch. Uh, this is the plating, we got a rinse, and then we got a, a chromate over here that you probably can't see, it's off camera a little bit, that turns it the yellow color. Then we got a rinse bucket for that. I have uh, another bottle here of blue 
uh, chromate to kind of give it a little bit of a silvery blue tinge but I don't have enough distilled water to mix another coloring uh, agent so we're going to have to go with the yellow chromate um, I would rather go with the silver but eh, it is what it is you can always just leave it bare uh, nickel plated too so anyway that's about as in depth as I'm going to get with it I got the part here the little pin in our uh, degreaser so these buckets are heated um, well at least these ones here have fish tank heaters in them most of the stuff isn't plugged in right now this one here's got a bucket heater which heats it up really hot so I got I use that to heat the three of them up and so they're all warm right now so we'll put this one in there acid etch it's got a uh, aquarium pump on um, aquarium pump on the bottom of it that just kind of circulates all the stuff in there so we just kind of leave that immersed in there for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And that should do what we want. Uh, as far as getting it ready for plating. So we'll just wait here. And then it'll be ready. So the wire I'm using to hold it is like a solid copper wire for conductivity. That's long enough. So we'll rinse that now. This is all distilled water I might have mentioned. So we'll kind of bend that a little different. Now I should have two plates in this little tank here, but I only got the one. So we'll connect this up like that. And we'll turn our power inverter on. We'll turn the current down because we don't need that much current. Go with half an amp, see what that looks like. And then we'll just leave that for a bit and we'll come back uh, and see what it looks like. Alright, so it's been about uh, well, 10 minutes or so. So we'll turn off the power here and see what we got. You can go longer, I think it says up to like an hour and a half or something like that. So you guys can see, I think, that's kind of starting to get shiny. Maybe not. Let's see if we can get some white coming from this direction. Just snow, maybe. <laughs> Oh, Canon. Just will not focus. Unless you make it. So. Definitely see it starting to get shiny. I think we'll leave it for a little while. Uh, I think we'll leave it for a little while longer. Ah, no. We're only trying to show our demonstration here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'll rinse it off there once more. Cover up that. Cover up that. So let me turn the camera a little bit so you can see. Alright, so we have our chromate on the end and a rinse for the chromate. So we just swirl it around probably can't see the other side of this bucket it's just uh, kind of like a dye basically and like I said I got the blue tint color too it's not as uh, deep as this one it just kind of changes the silver a little bit so anyway we'll rinse it off and the surface metal wasn't you know perfect either so 
you know, the plating isn't going to be perfect. But, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good considering what we're doing. Yeah, you know, what it, uh, what it actually is we're working on here. And I gotta do the whole manual focus thing again. So. Anyway, so that's that and that'll be good enough I think. I'll let it dry overnight or whatever. Well, I think I showed you guys some of this before but this is how nice the plating could look. Uh, this was brand new uh, 1045 steel rod and that turned out really nice. Uh, this one here was just cleaned up real good with a water wheel. This one here was cleaned up kind of half good. And these ones here were new steel as well. So anyway, that's some 380CK parts uh, that I that I made. Well, I didn't make this one or this one or this one. I made the rest of it though. So anyway, that's 380 stuff. So I guess we'll keep going here. I'll move on to uh, doing the track rod ends now. You guys can see since the last clip or last video, I think, uh, I did buy two more of the same jack stands I had for the back and I put them under the front there. They're not uh, as spread apart you know, as I would like, um, but I have to have somewhere to jack it too. So it's, uh, it's plenty stable like that. So anyway, we will Deal with that track bar next. Actually, we might have to do the steering. Is the steering in the way of the track bar? No. Okay. We'll do the track bar next. Hey guys, I got the track uh, track bar here in the vise, and this is the old end. You can see <laughs> there might be uh, a little bit of steering play caused by something like that. So. We gotta loosen off this here bolt and then we're gonna unthread this. But before we get started, I'm just gonna take a measuring tape and run it from one end of the track bar to the other end uh, just to get a measurement on it so we can kind of get it close to the way it was. Uh, I was looking at the track bar and it does have a bit of a bend to it, but um, I mean, I don't have one to replace it with. We'll try to look for one, I guess. Uh, and if I find one, I'll just have to switch the ends over or whatever. That's not a big deal, but uh, it'll be all right. It's not bent bad enough that it's going to cause an issue. Just that the adjustment will have to change a little bit from you know where it really should be. But it was on the tractor before, and the wheels did look to be straight, so it must uh, it must be all right. So anyway, we'll just try to keep the measurements and, and the clocking of the the uh, joints the same as they are now. <clears throat> and uh, we'll just put the new ones on. I have the new ones here somewhere. So here's one of the new ones. And hopefully that's not too blown out there. So I have one of the new ones here. Uh, hopefully they're the right ones. They look to be the right ones. I don't know if there's a left or a right. We're, we're going to find out together. Um, yeah, the place I bought these from, and I, I don't mention places uh, where I buy parts from too much. Uh, you know, I, I don't feel like uh, advertising for them for free. They don't give me any deals anyway, and I don't feel like, uh, you know, being too hard on them either at the same time. But, uh, yeah, this place, is, uh, it's one of the top places to buy David Brown parts and I find them to be a little bit a little bit hit and miss um, but I emailed them beforehand and told them exactly what I need and I gave them the serial number and all the information they would possibly need about the tractor and then I called them and followed up with the email and ordered it so there's no reason why these should be the wrong parts but I just I don't know I just had that feeling you know so anyway we're gonna loosen off this not here first and uh, go from there.
not want to stay in the vise that well. <clears throat> there we go. Now we're in business. <laughs> See how quick I forgot. I said I was going to measure that. Three and a half inches. So let me mark that down. On, on something. Oh, the shop's a bit of a mess down here. So we'll try to make sure it's still 53 and a half. And I don't know if this mark is going to stay or not, but. I'll try to mark. Roughly where they're clocked at. I'll leave them uh, loose-ish so that, you know, I can turn them a little bit at, at the tractor, I guess, so it won't really matter. But <coughs> anyway, we'll uh, loosen that off. What size is this now? 15, 16, I need another one. So this track bar is going to have to be all cleaned up and uh, painted too, obviously, but uh, I, might I might clean it up off the tractor, but I think we're just going to paint it on the tractor with the rest of it. I don't think there's any need of painting it separately. I don't think I really need to take that completely out of there, but I guess we will. Try and knock some of the dirt loose. All right, so I don't know. Should that turn out of there now? Yeah, it's turning. All right. Let's uh, let's get some penetrating oil on it, maybe. Back out of the way, maybe it'd be better. What do we got here? Flat screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna grab some penetrating oil. We've been using a lot of this uh, Swepco stuff uh, around the farm lately. It's pretty good stuff. Um, get it from a friend of mine in New Brunswick there, Maritime Farmer. He's a dealer for Swepco. And uh, yeah, it's a good product. So if you're uh, you know, in New Brunswick or whatever, look them up and get some it's not uh, it's not the cheapest stuff in the world but it works good yeah let's see if we're going the right way here I think so so that loosened right up now I can turn it by hand I like to clean this up now with a, a bit of brake cleaner before we put another one back on 
Like I said, I'm hoping that they're both the same thread because I'm pretty sure both ends that I got are the same. So if one's left hand thread, which I don't think it is, but if it is, we're really gonna be in trouble. I'll just show you guys doing the one end here. You don't need to see the whole song and dance, I don't think. Yeah. So that was done. Not looking to make it, you know, sparkling clean. I mean, how far do you want to go, really? But we'll make it a little better than it is. That's fairly clean, I think. So we'll uh, just test this, see if it's going to thread in. Looks like it is. So I'm going to get some never sees here and put that on the threads. I don't know how necessary this is, just kind of habit. I used to always buy the never sees in the little tubs. And uh, I like it like that a lot better in the tube with the brush on the end of it. Alright. And we just got to wind her in. It's always kind of a, a battle in my mind when I put stuff like this on. It's like, do I want on one hand to have the nice shiny new looking uh, tie rod in there, like, or do I want to just paint it black and match the rest of the tractor? But I think it would end up rusting if we didn't paint it. So anyway, that's that one on. Uh, I'm not going to tighten it uh, just yet. We're going to leave it off uh, until I do the other end. Looks like there's some wear on. That bolt maybe. Uh, so I'm going to do the other end and we'll make a measure on it. Make sure everything is, you know, the way it was before. And uh, yeah, I probably should have pounded that bracket off and cleaned it up, but it's kind of late now, I guess. Anyway, I'll, I'll spare you the details. I'll show you guys uh, once I get it done. All right, there it is. I don't know if you guys can tell. If there's any bend in it probably not it's pretty subtle but anyway that's the new ends in it and just need to clean up the grease and whatnot off of it and just sand her down a little bit and uh, probably put it back on the tractor and uh, it'll be ready for paint all right so uh, in the meantime there, I actually took that steering cylinder off. Uh, I didn't make any video uh, taking it off, but it was pretty straightforward. I'm just going to hold it in here. So we got a little bit of work to do to this thing. I'll show you guys. So I'm not sure why there's two grease fittings on this, but uh, there's spherical bearings in the ends of these cylinders. Well, cylinder, there's only one, just like that. So 
We uh, got to figure out a way to get that out of there and get this new one in. We got one for each end of the cylinder. Uh, it probably could use being resealed too. But uh, the price on the seal kit from Case was quite a bit. And I haven't really looked for an aftermarket option yet. I did price the whole cylinder before I bought the ends. And I think there's, there was a place in Florida. I guess it didn't have a very tight device. There's a place in Florida that had one for well, $680 or something like that. I'm going to move it down here so I can clamp onto it a bit tighter. All right. Now, I'm not sure what all holds those in. There, I see it. So I, I kind of lied a little bit when I said I didn't know what held them in. I did know, I just couldn't see it. I looked up in the parts book before. There's uh, little C-clips that hold it in. Uh, I think I priced them up too because I was going to buy the two spherical bearings and the ends from Case. And uh, Yeah, just about fell over when I seen the price of them. I think these here snap rings are like $13 a piece. So we'll try to get it out without winging it across the room. You guys might not be able to see this. That great. I was actually going to look for a ball peen hammer, but Why bother? Wow. Okay then. I had one guy comment a while back on a video. He was like, You're not a real mechanic. You're not using a degree hammer. You're using a claw hammer. So, this is for you. All right, so it's a couple days later. I had some time to think about it. And I did get the snap ring out. It's right here. Uh, all I did was I just drilled a hole right there. Maybe you guys can see it. I just drilled a hole right there so I could get behind it and pry it out, no problem. Uh, I was going to heat it and bend it up, but I thought, yeah, whatever. What's the point? So... That seemed to work all right. Now I gotta drive this up out of here, and then we gotta move on to uh, that end there. So anyway, we're getting there. Well, I got them out. Just gotta clean up a little bit. Uh, I gotta get this. Maybe you guys can see. Broke off grease fitting out of there. This end's done too. Clean this up, and it should be good to go. All right, I did a little bit of cleaning up on the cylinder here, and I re-threaded these holes. Um, there's a set screw that goes in here, and a grease fitting that goes in here. I just ordered a couple new metric grease fittings for it, and it should be the same thing on this end, but we can press in our new um, bearings. There's an old one there. And I got the new ones. 
here in this bag. So I'll set the camera up and we'll do that. So there's this one I got in. I don't know if you can see or not. Yeah, you can maybe. Right there by the tip of my finger. Yeah, hopefully it's in focus. Well, I have to step back a little bit. But the race broke on it. That's the new one, by the way. It broke on it, but I can only see it broke on like one side. So I don't know if it broke as far as the center ring and then wasn't broke after that or what but i don't know hopefully it'll be all right i gotta kind of pound that circle clip in a little bit further but this one here oh it's still hot <laughs> i caught this after i pounded it in and i figured i mean it still seems all right but i caught that after i pounded it in i thought maybe it was because i was too hard on it so this one here i heated up the end of the cylinder and then I just dropped it in. It fell right in place. And uh, you can see it's still hot. It's probably still half loose, I wouldn't do it. I won't push back up again, but anyway, right there at the tip of the punch, it broke there too, same as the other one. And that one, like I, did, I didn't pound that one at all, I just dropped it in place. So that was kind of weird. Um, I don't know, I think they'll be alright. We'll put the clip on them and that's about all we can do, I guess. It's kind of weird. They're just cheap. I mean, they just say right there, that there says it all. China. So, yeah. Well, that is an SKF. Anyway, I don't know. What can you do? Just have to watch it. We'll replace them again with the uh, proper case ones, I guess, if there's a problem. But I think the case ones are over $100 a piece, and these ones were not anywhere near that. So it was worth a try. And, uh, yeah, when that cools down, I'll put that circlip in. i got to try to fix that circlip a little bit better. And, uh, yeah, should be ready to put all this stuff back on the tractor. And that was still hot, believe it or not. So, yeah. All right, so I got the cylinder here. I cleaned it up a little bit. You can see the paint is kind of cleaned up, I guess. I uh, put a brand new grease fitting on it. I had to order these from McMaster Car. They're metric. I don't actually have any metric grease fittings around, but there it is, Met metric grease fitting. So I got M6 by one thread on it. And we also got brand new uh, set screws in place. So we're ready to put the cylinder back on. Uh, I made a new pin up for, uh, the inside end, the other one got marred up pretty bad trying to get uh, the cylinder off. So we will um, just put her together, I guess. And I replated that knot. I didn't really have to do that, but I don't know. New toy, I guess. I cleaned it up some and then uh, I wasn't going to plate it, but I did. So I plated it and painted it. I didn't use the curl mate on it because I didn't want to mess with the paint. I think it should be all right otherwise. So anyway, we will stick the pin in here. Hopefully not blocking the view too bad. Okay, find the hole now. So I'm going to have to pound that up with a hammer, I guess. I don't, uh, I have it somewhere, but it's not right here. The roll pin that could go through it. I should probably make sure. Make sure that that's lined up before we drive that up there. All right. It's not too bad. It's, it's a snug fit, 
but it's not overly tight. Just gonna finish driving that the rest of the way, I guess, until we can get our roll pin in it. So, the camera's in my way, so I'll move it. And I'll get back to you guys in a second. All right, there's the cylinder on. I actually end up changing my mind a little bit. Uh, I took the grease fittings I put in back out and I put more set screws in because I had a whole bag of them, uh, just to save them getting paint. Uh, on the grease fittings, just better off getting uh, paint on those Allen screws and then I'll replace them with grease fittings later on so that was my idea there so anyway now we're gonna move on and we're gonna put that uh, track rod on that's all ready to go to all right here's the track rod I think it goes like that oh, slide it over Sense, doesn't it? Let me go to the other side. Maybe it doesn't go this way. You guys know I did the other nut? Seems to have vanished. There it is. No, oh, this side goes on. So theoretically that shouldn't require any adjustment or not too much anyway. So we'll just and make sure everything's turned right we'll slide those clamps down and tighten them up on either side and that should be it we gotta tighten up those nuts on the bottom too obviously but that's our tie rod and steering cylinder that should make a huge difference compared to what it was anyways guys hope you enjoyed the video uh that's kind of a wrap up on the front end work at least that we're gonna do uh, for now, for this year, uh, maybe next winter I might tackle the rest of the front axle like I would like to do the U-joints in it and the pivot on the center and the uh, like the king pins where it turns and all the bearings and that in there. But I mean that'll be a, a job where we drop the front axle out from under it and just kind of go at her. Uh, but I'm not going to do it at least right now maybe next winter we'll see i don't know uh, i like to do the pivot for sure before it starts to wear too too bad it's not terrible right now but it does have some play in it so yeah anyway so the next step here in the process of the restoration uh, is going to be i'm going to have to clean up this thing a whole bunch more even though i've cleaned it and cleaned it repeatedly but it has to be cleaned more uh i got a bunch of 
uh, sanding to do on rusty spots and stuff like that, especially on the front end, which hasn't really been touched too much, that front axle. So I'm going to spend probably the next week or so kind of tackling that kind of stuff and going over that and just basically prepping it for uh, paint. So the next video, I'm not going to do a video on all the sanding and cleaning. That's just boring. Uh, I may do a small video on the painting or at least a little update video when the painting is is done on the chassis and she's all you know black and nice looking but uh yeah so that's kind of what we got going on right now and uh i'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take me to get to <laughs> i say a week but i don't know how long it's really going to take me it might take me two weeks because uh, i'm kind of hoping for a little bit of warmer weather too i mean i've had we've had some warm days and then today is like you know uh, wind and rain and snow at times so it's not that nice out but hopefully we got some warmer days coming up and uh, that'll help us with the painting and whatnot so anyway guys thanks for watching and uh we'll see you in the next one